There's Bay. <laughs> Good. She's a little bit of a distance from us, which is fantastic, because we're going to be talking about the bow. Hey, cool cat. Welcome to another mental health music lesson with Imani Music. Today, we're going to be talking about how to use the bow on your violin, part two. Now, since you're able to hold up your violin and have your bow hand in a fist shape and be able to play some open strings, we're going to be talking about having the correct fit, correct hand shape over our bow. So we're going to take our fist again. We're going to just keep what we've practiced this whole time. And now we're going to loosen this up a little bit. So first, I'd like you just to loosen up your fist. I know you don't physically see anything different, but if you can move each finger and still have the bow generally within your grasps, and why the bow doesn't fall out of my hand is because I have this little circle here. My thumb and my first finger are kind of holding the bow up. And this is very important because these fingers are going to be key in how we're actually holding the bow. After you make sure that all your fingers can easily move like this, and you have, we've had our, I make sure my hand isn't changing, we've had our knuckles over this part of the bow. I make sure all of them can move a little bit, right? And my, my bow moves around when I move the fingers. That's all good, all natural. It means that our hands are nice and loose, which is what we want while we're transitioning into the correct finger um, positioning. So there's a nice part on the bow, which we call the eye or the frog. Well, this whole section is called the frog of the bow, but we call this the eye right over here. And we're going to be taking our little fists. And I like to actually, let me turn you like this. I like to put my hand down over here where the um my fingertips are placed are on some type of flat surface and i'm going to take my thumb out so i'm going to take my thumb make sure i can move my thumb easily and i'm going to move it on top and i'm just going to practice this motion a little bit to make sure i have flexibility of my thumb okay now since we have flexibility of the thumb we're going to move another finger and we're going to make sure we have flexibility of that first finger as it's sitting here so now the thumb and the first finger can go out. They can go out and they can go back in. So the next step is to bring that thumb up and in. So make sure the thumb can go up and then go right in here. So what I'm doing is there's a little bit of space between the bow and my hand. And I'm simply just poking my thumb in, making sure it can go in. And just making sure you have that type of flexibility. The next step is to make sure that the thumb can go in and we're actually going to lift up our hand a little bit to make sure that it can go right here. This little pocket is our new, our, our thumb's new home. <laughs> so our thumb is going to live in this little pocket right over here. So making sure the thumb can just sit right over there. Now we're gonna turn our thumb just a wee bit. So we're gonna turn our thumb down. Hey, bae. <laughs> we're gonna turn our thumb down as if it's our thumbs doing a little bit of a dance, the boogie woogie woogie right over there. And sometimes we have to move our hand a little bit up in order to make sure that our thumb can twist like that. Hi, babe. Okay, let's get to the next step. Now, you may take a look at your hand afterwards and notice that the rest of your fingers are doing some interesting stuff as a result of your thumb simply changing from going underneath to up to in and then to being turned right over there. When you're making that turning motion, you'll notice that your hand will turn a little bit as well. That's great, that's really good. I want you to move your the rest of your fingers freely, and it may take a second for you to get this position where your other fingers can move freely, your thumb may need to move a little bit. Every hand's a little bit different, and it takes everyone a different amount of time get this. It took me a while to figure it out. And for some people, it just takes a second. This is going to be our second bow hold, which is the thumb down and then the fingers like this, kind of draping over the other side. 
and they're going to be draping past the bow so we have a nice good grip on the bow right now now typically we don't call this bow <laughs> hold a grip because grip implies that we have tension in the hand but temporarily because we're going from a form of having a fist to a form that's a little bit more relaxed we're going to call this a grip until we actually get the true final form at hand okay cool cats now i want you oops, now i want you to take your bow hand and i want you to turn now before we had a flat surface here and we had our fist right and then everything looked like this but now i want you to put that fist out as if you're giving a fist bump again boom just like that boom and this is the type of shape i want you to have right now you'll notice on the other side that my thumb still has this it's still inside right next to the eye of the frog <laughs> and it's still pointing mostly down you'll notice that when i'm playing in this position it's kind of like facing like this and this is its most like natural face oh it's natural position so you'll notice it's not directly going out it's kind of based it's it's very relaxed these form this shape is a very relaxed shape if your hand doesn't look exactly like this that's okay this is just a transition point to when we're actually playing at our final hand position so with this we're going to do the same thing where our fist we're going to do the fist out elbow going out and then we're going to i'm actually going to now move my wrist my wrist is going to play a game in making sure that this is perpendicular with my string. So now I can use my wrist to guide the bow. And this is going to help you actually play a string and keep it straight. Because if your wrist is moving, is in the wrong, is not going in the direction perpendicular with the strings, for example... you may get a little bit of an angle at the end. And we don't want that. So, now our wrist is involved. Additionally, not only is our wrist helping us become perpendicular, but our wrist lifts up now as we play. So as we go up, our wrist goes up. As we go, and it kind of goes like this. <laughs> if you ever like throw a, a basketball, or if you're ever telling someone doing that little gesture, then you'll know how this feels. So let's go right here. Your wrist goes up when you go up on with the bow. And then when you go down, your wrist goes down. My wrist actually goes so down that it actually goes out like this. So I like to do this to practice I like to take my bow and push it and go down like this where it's hanging and then I like to go up, down, up, down, up, just like that. And practicing this wrist motion because this is very important to being able to play a beautiful sound on the violin. Okay, cool cats. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something about music and I hope that you can apply this knowledge of how to play the violin so that when you're feeling down or when you're feeling sad, you can go to your violin, play a little bit and make some beautiful sounds and learn how you like to play the violin and how you make music. Now, please keep in mind that this is just a temporary bow hold. And the next video we'll be talking about the actual bow hold, the final hold that we have to create a beautiful sound on the instrument. So stay tuned, Cool Cat, keep practicing, and I hope that you have a mentally healthy rest of your day. Bye.